PVM solver. So let's talk about how to do that uh, quick here. Uh, first, on your calculator, notice we have this apps button. I'll just tap on that. And then we have uh, a lot of different kind of apps. We want the very first one, finance. So I'll hit uh, the enter key. And the TVM solver is the first option there. So I'll hit enter again. So let's enter what we need to know here. Uh, we have 25 payments. So that's N. Interest rate. Now we want to make this a percent. Notice here we're given a percent here, 5.75. And then uh, we're not concerned with the present value. The payment, I'm, I'm going to make this a negative sign because think of that as money going out. We're looking for the future value, right? So where I have the cursor now, that's what we're looking for. We'll get to that in a minute. The payments per year, one. And the cost per year, but we're really not concerned about that. And notice at the at the very bottom line here, it says PMT, end and begin. Well, we always want to have that on end because in this section, we're always talking about an ordinary annuity. Okay, so we're looking for the future value here. So to get that, all we have to do is to hit the alpha key and then hit enter. And notice here in the green, it says solve right there. So if we do that, notice what we get. $46,084.98, just like we did by using the formula. Uh, but this is all kind of pre-programmed and laid out for us. So we can use this TVM solver as well. All right. Um, and uh, in slide number eight, we talk about the uh, TVM solver. You can look over that. Also, if you look in the back of the book in Appendix C, you'll find a uh, future value program that we can also use if you just simply plug in the information we have. If you don't, if you have a, a graphing calculator that doesn't have a TVM solver, like maybe one of the early uh, TI-83s. All right, now let's turn things around a little bit now. Slide number nine. In general, we can say uh, any account that is established for the purpose of generating funds to cover fin a financial obligation is called a sinking fund. Now, uh, this is used a lot in, um, in uh, municipal uh, sort of finance and that kind of thing, where you're kind of looking ahead, maybe in school finance as well, where you're talking about sinking funds. And so notice here the formula for the sinking fund, and look what we did. We took the uh, future value formula and we simply solved it for the um, payment. So um, we, we took the inverse, the, the reciprocal, pardon me, of the, um, of the uh, uh, periodic uh, constant, the S angle I fraction. And then we have the future value on the right now because that's what the value we're going to be putting in. So this will give us, for some future value that we want to have, and for some uh, interest rate and some payment period, we'll find the necessary payment to make all that happen. All right, so let's take a look at an example of this now in slide number 10. Um, it says here, for his retirement, Dave wants to have a quarter million dollars in a 403B account 25 years from now. A 403B account is very much like a 401K. Um, it, just, it just goes by a different name. It's used for different kind of clientele. How much should he deposit each month in the account, which yields 5.25% interest, which is compounded monthly? So in other words, how big are your monthly payments going to have to be so you have a quarter million dollars in this account after 25 years? All right. So take a look at this now. In slide number 11, we have our solution. Here we need to compute uh, the payment where the future value is a quarter million dollars. K is 12. We have 12 payments per year. And uh, the um, number of payments, the, excuse me, the number of um, uh, the number of payments, the number of times we deposit the money is 25 times 12, 300. And the uh, periodic rate is 0 0.0525 divided by 12. All right. And that gives us, our, uh, so we can use our sinking fund formula to find that. So notice here we have uh, a quarter million dollars times I, which is 
0.0525 over 12, the periodic rate. And then we have 1 plus the periodic rate raised to the n power, remember n is 300, minus 1. So we end up with $404.37. So this means that Dave needs to deposit uh, $404.37 monthly into the account to have a quarter million dollars in 25 years. So notice here, much like we did with the first example, you could punch these numbers in your calculator just using the calculator screen and find this number. But you could also use that P, uh, PVM solver again. So let's take a look and see how we do that. So let's just remind us here, in this case we have 25 times 12. That's the number of payments. So I'll just hit the enter key and notice it does the computation for us. The interest rate now is 5.25%. And the payment, we don't know that, so I'll put in a zero here. The future value is going to be $250,000. The payments per year will be 12. And again, the payments are made at the end of the month. It's an ordinary annuity. And so what we want to do is to find this payment amount. And so again, I'll do what I did before. I'll, hit, I'll tap on the alpha key and then hit enter. And notice there, since we're making a payment, the value is negative there. And it ends up being $404. And I guess that's what, 37 cents rounded to the nearest penny there. Huh? All right, if you take a look at the, uh, the uh, TVM solver and solve it that way. All right, uh, one other thing now. Uh, let's talk about this idea of, of, you know, we've talked about how to find the, the payment. Uh, given the interest rate and given the uh, future value. We've talked about how, how to find the future value if we're given the payment and we're given the interest rate. But now, let's say we want to find the interest rate to achieve some sort of payment, some sort of future value, and some sort of payment. So what we want to do is, is we can do this. Uh, we can graph the future value formula with R being the independent variable. In other words, you know, when we graph something on a calculator, um, X has to be the independent variable value always. So we'll let, just, uh, let that be the interest rate R, the annual rate. And then uh, we, can we can also graph the desired future value amount. So in other words, the first function that we graph will be the future value formula. The second one will be the future value amount. And then all we need to do then is to take a look at the point of intersection of these two graphs. And in particular, look at the x coordinate. That'll give us the desired interest rate, r. All right, let's try one of these now and see how that works. And so in slide 13, let's determine the annual interest rate to the hundredth that guarantees that the future value of an annuity is $600,000, where $1,250 is deposited each quarter for 25 years into an account paying interest compounded quarterly. All right, so in slide 14 here, we have our solution. Let's first understand the situation. Let's let X represent the desired interest rate. And so knowing that the payment is $1,250 and K is four. We have 100 payments, right? 25 times uh, 25 times four. Remember the interest was compounded quarterly. Notice here the function we get. Y sub one is 1,250, the payment amount. And then we have one plus, remember X is the R, the annual interest rate. 